Hello, everybody. We are the Northern Knives crew. This is Lori. And uh, we're talking about what we would love in our stockings for Christmas this year. Already were. So who's, who's, who's going first, Lori? I think we should do Rock, Paper, Chad. Rock, Paper, rock, Chad. Paper, Chad. Yeah, done. Chad wins. Chad's, Chad, you're going. Paper, Chad. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in my stocking. So is this realistic or is this just what you found upstairs? This is realistic. <laughs> this is uh, probably stuff that I would love to have in a stocking or just as a gift in general. Hopefully your um, stocking's bigger then. <laughs> oh, it's got a zipper. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it all fits. <laughs> Chad, what do you want for Christmas this year? Hey, uh, what do I want for Christmas this year? Two uh, front teeth. Wham! Uh, one. He has good health insurance, so it's not a problem. I don't have good health insurance. I have great free, health insurance on my knee free, only. Free health insurance. <laughs> free health insurance on my knee only. <laughs> All right, Chad, what do well, you got? And my ankle. What, what do you got for it? For what starters, for? Um, I got the Boker something or other. What is this? Urban one? Trapper. Urban Trapper. Um, this oh, guy G10. here. Interesting choice. His, um, <laughs> actually, this is the one that my brother had. Oh. Um, he, he, no, he didn't. He didn't have this one? He had the carbon fiber. He had the, had the titanium, titanium frame, the skeleton uh, frame, which we're out of. Well, it's pretty much the exact same thing. <laughs> uh, but, so my brother had one of these. He carried it on himself uh, all the time. Doug. Stupid Doug. Stupid Doug. Stupid, stupid Doug. But, in practicality, you know, this was His freaking food night. great. Yeah, he took it out to uh, whenever he was eating. Um, all the for time. Anytime you go out to a restaurant and you need to cut meat. Their knives are garbage. This one, he had on him to, just for that reason, cut cut his steaks. Okay, that was number pretty much one, it. we have three items, by the way. Next on the list is the Aller. Oh, <laughs> tell me about the Aller. I the like Aller, this, before. this one, we have done this one before. Uh, click to this video here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and there it is. Uh, so this uh, one I really enjoyed. Uh, I don't like its counterpart though. I think just, just the, the standard aller. The standard aller is so this is the aller fumé. <laughs> yes. The fumé. The 381 um, for the uninitiated. The aller fumé. The cigar cutter <laughs> portion of it is yeah, awesome. Yeah. Actually, even cutting with it for that uh, one video, we had some great cuts <clears throat> with it for cigars. Can you do me a favor? Why? Thank you, sir. Dunk. Love it. Perfect. Love it. Great sound effects. Yep. Yeah. If you guys didn't hear that crunch, I'll insert one later. Probably right about now. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so, okay. Uh, so I really enjoyed that this little guy um, had a function I would use, finally. Do you feel like you, you, would, you would use any of the other functions of the knife, though? The money clip. Pry bar, screwdriver, nothing like that? No. Nope. Okay. It could be a bottle opener. Yeah, bottle opener as well. Yeah. So those two are... Fantastic. And then, oh God, I, mean, it has <laughs> I already have oh some my. of the Miyabi, 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 Miyabi steak knife, or I have some of their other knives of this uh, set, and I thought just having a set of steak knives Holy would be freaking awesome. If you had to pick a nice set, though, too, that's not, not <clears throat> a bad way to go. Mm -hmm. I would say that is mint. Pretty stellar. Yeah. Out of this world. Tubular. It is on fleek. Is on it, those, those are on fleek. I would say it's it fetch. was. Was? <laughs> it was. What's, what's the term now? Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> is this VG10 as well? Yes. This guy? So they're both VG10, right? This is I, like a is it pattern welded VG10. I don't know if it's like a proprietary. It's their own like fancy version of VG10. CMV60 stainless steel. Oh, so I can put them in the dishwasher, right? No. <laughs> not at all. As long as you use a plastic cutting board, your knives are going to be great. Who would like to go next? Uh, well, what's it going to be? Alistair, so. I'd like to know so, what you want for Christmas. I've curated um, this uh, stocking because I'm a knife nerd, so um, I like some weird stuff. So let's, uh, <laughs> let's pop it open and see what we got. So a little more mundane items, but still a very necessary item to have around is nano oil. Oh, that is a great idea. Exactly. If someone got me a tube of nano oil in my stocking, I would love it. This is good on pretty much everything knife related. You can use it on threads, <laughs> pivots, anything. It, it has a myriad of uses in the knife world. Is it Shove it in your engine. It's, I wouldn't recommend it, but you can do it. <laughs> they do have engines, so. So why, yeah, is, do they? why is nano oil so good? 
<clears throat> it's just the best, man. It's the best oil I found, like lubricant, uh, when it comes to, like if you have like a sticky auto, you push that button and the blade kind of grandpa's this way out of there. A couple drops of this, and that's gonna be flying out of there. It's brand new. So it's Viagra for knives. <laughs> you could say that. Yeah, that's a fair. pep in their step. You could definitely say it, that. Is that a, a pocket much... clip? <laughs> <laughs> if you need it to be, yes. God, that is such a yeah. grandpa gift. I love it. Uh, yeah, and I love it too. That's why it's in my stock. I would probably do that. Right there, my shirt. <coughs> right. Mm -hmm. in, in the one that has a pocket. What most people don't know is they come in different weights. They so do. So you can get for like hot weather or cold mm -hmm. weather. And the the way, that, I don't know how or what makes the oil so much smaller, but it gets into like tiny crevices. It's, yeah. It's like yep. it goes down to a certain micron and it's like a much smaller and more not really invasive, but it's a more, what's the word I'm looking for? Intrusive? Sure. It's oil. <laughs> it's better penetration. It sure. gets everywhere. So yes. um, for those of you who don't know, this is the same weight we use in the shop, which is 10 weight. Um, and is excellent stuff. It's not the most viscous. It's not the, you know, um, it's not the thinnest, but it is the best kind of all around uh, oil. Wow. Educational yeah. for once. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, <laughs> second is a favorite one we got in the shop recently. Oh, yeah? The Todd Bag Bodega. Oh. <laughs> so the cool thing with this knife. Just, uh, get this up on the table. <laughs> so the cool thing with this knife is it's by a very famous knife designer, Todd Bag, And this is from his Steelcraft series. So um, it is uh, designed to bring his, you know, his customs that cost thousands and thousands of dollars down to uh, a price point that fits, you know, most people, mine included, uh, budget. So this goes for $400 and it is on... Uh, you know, bearings, it's all titanium, and it, it really just brings his awesome knives down to a, kind of a more affordable steel? price point. S35, I'm glad Mike's not here. <laughs> so it's S35, which is not bad. It's not the worst. But on a $400 knife, it might yeah. be better. But overall, the <clears throat> fit and finish is is excellent. Um, the action is excellent. You really I mean, can't beat something like that. It is an awesome looking knife. Absolutely, well, yeah. It's a functional piece a of A lot of $400 yeah. knives have S35. They do, they do. So it's not out of place. <clears throat> Yeah. Um, it's not out of place. <coughs> yeah, it's... So titanium and titanium, or...? It's all titanium. Uh, it... I think this is an inlay, but I think it's all titanium. Um, but it's, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's like a gold and like I a I saw it a, a come bronze. in, but I haven't looked much at it. Yeah, it's a very cool knife, <clears throat> um, which is live on the website. Sure. I like that clip. <laughs> it's nice, That's right? really cool. It is, it is. Rather than like the two holes are usually not yeah. very like structurally safe, but mm -hmm. this is pretty cool. Awesome. That's beefy. Yeah, yeah Todd's I wonder if those cool are extra stuff. long screws actually going into the backspace on one of those. Mm -hmm. No, it goes into the frame. Mm -hmm. Oh, but that is a beefy frame, so it it's is really a beefy frame. Out. And the and screws are popping up a little bit there, so it goes in. And my final item, this one comes a curveball to some. <laughs> is it? Is it now? Is it? Let's really? Let's pop it open here. Do you need a knife? Uh, it's the Chavez Chubb. Oh, no way! Are you serious? Absolutely. <clears throat> I love this thing. <clears throat> so, 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 dumb. so the chub is an, uh, is short for the uh, Chavez Handy Utility Blade, mm -hmm. and um, it just is uh, it's just a cool little it's knife, funky. you know. Obviously, it's it's more of a razor blade than anything else. Uh, but I have a buddy in Oregon who carries one of these, and this guy probably carries like six knives on him a day, and he uses this more more than anything else. And it just is cool. It's the nicest uh, little box open you ever use. And I know, fellow knife nerds, uh, you use your knife to open boxes more than anything else whether you like to admit it or not. And this is the perfect tool for that. It really is. And um, they make Damascus razor blades for this. Just saying. So just saying. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yes. So I, I really love this one. They're not cheap either. They're not. Yeah, that's about 250 <clears throat> and that's a used price or a pre-owned price. Um, but there's a, you know, a lot of detail work to it and they're really nice little knives or uh, utility blades, I suppose. <laughs> As a side point, that is a fun little. Everyone using yeah. their knife to open boxes. Yes, right? exactly. So, I'm a little bit. You guys always make fun of me for my fucking trade. The reason why it's always dull is because I use it to fucking cut sheathing on cabling and trim wires. And if you use this, your shave would be like a razor. Yeah, it would be. I yeah. shave with it. Yeah. I wouldn't want to, but I could. Yeah. Just get Laura to sharpen it, and you can still shave with it. So. Yeah. Put a nano like edge on it. <laughs> Put a micron edge on it. <laughs> All right. So is it easy to change out the blade? It sure is. You need some tools, so you just have to pop these guys out. Pop the whole back end Exactly, up. and after that Does point... Does this thing last long enough to where you don't have to constantly replace it? It, it depends on what razor exactly. blade you use. It is a razor blade. It's an it's exacto knife. That's all it is. Okay. Yeah. It's the, the body that it's, you're paying exactly. for. Exactly. It's the titanium frame that you're really paying for. Okay. Uh, which we can anodize in any color you like. Oh, just really? Just a heads up. And why is that? 
Uh, because we have the technology, Lori. Oh. High five to that. <laughs> Not only that, we can do all sorts of crazy designs. If you're an IT guy like I am, maybe you want a circuit pattern engraved on there in gold, oh. and then you want the background to be like a nice circuit board green or a classic like <clears throat> Heathkit brown. We could fucking do that and get rid of that skull clip. <laughs> well, A, leave the skull clip. I actually sort of like that. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's a Chavez uh, kind of trademark. Signature? Yeah, uh, yeah, signature, sure. Words are escaping <laughs> us. <laughs> that's true. Um, but the point is, this is something that I would mm, never carry as my words. <laughs> <laughs> I would never carry as the I would never carry this as my only knife in a given day. But it makes the perfect utility and backup knife because you can do everything you, you need to do with this. You can do with the regular knife if I was carrying like these two. But I wouldn't open boxes with this. I wouldn't you know strip cable with this. I would do it with this, and this blade would still be immaculate at the end of the day. I feel like it's when I carry my Benchmade. Yeah, is my regular knife, uh -huh. and I carry my Great Eastern, my little exactly. Warcliffe. It's a, it's exactly the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that is an excellent stocking yeah. stuffer. Yeah, get up. All right. Well, I'll, I'll go through mine here. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. So, I had difficulty because I'm a cheap bastard and I get hives when I think of like what I'd want to receive in a stocking or what I'd give to someone else in a stocking. So, I went with things that I thought were a little bit more utilitarian. Is there a paracord in there? No. I went with things <laughs> that three rolls of paracord. <laughs> I would actually enjoy receiving a version of and someone could, in theory, if they hit the right deal, pick them up for not too horribly much, <clears throat> except the last one. Um, so, the first thing I got here is oh. very cool. A Boker Tree Brand Straight Razor. Question? Yes. Do you shave with a straight razor? Or can you? Me? Yes. Yes, I can. Do you have one? I do not. No. Oh. I didn't know that you were skilled in the straight razor shaving. It's not horribly hard. You just take your time and go against the grain. Well, being as someone who doesn't grow great <laughs> facial hair, I didn't know. If you can't grow hard. a full beard. <laughs> now she only grows the mustache down to here. <laughs> I only grow it down to here. Thank you. Well, as the viewers at home will probably notice, I have <clears throat> the facial features and the neckline of a slug, so it's nice curved angles ah, instead of angular. I see. Because I'm I'm not on the uh, cover of some romance novel, <laughs> but I picked this guy specifically because it's an antique. It's got micarta scales, which I really like. I would, If I were to get it, I'd probably rough up the micarta scales, which would ruin the value. But I don't fucking care because I'll keep the value it for the rest of my point. life. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I've always kind of wanted a straight razor. I've used my grandfather's a few times. He never uses it anymore, but I feel uncomfortable taking it, so it's still at his house. Um, so, yeah, it's something I would use, and I think that'd be a great stocking stuffer for anyone, especially guys in your life. My dad has his dad's from like forever ago and I've sharpened it a couple times and stropped it. And so I understand like the significance of like having a straight razor and like using it. It's not, like a not, ritual. It's not so yeah. much that the shave is really that much better. It's the ritual of doing it like I'm, I'm going out or yeah. getting married. It's kind of like putting on your armor kind of yeah. thing. It's definitely a very old school tradition that not many people understand. Yeah. Then the other <laughs> thing I got, now that I'm not scared of cutting my hand if something opens. Um, I was going to grab the boker, except I saw you grab it, so I grabbed myself a Shun Gentleman's Knife. Oh, the steak knife. First steak, steak knife. knife. Yeah. yeah steak knife. Great. We sell so many of these. These yeah. are a great add to anyone's collection. Now, speaking as that, I actually used Doug's steak knife, and I used this, and I did a, a photo shoot with not the best cut of meat, but it was nice thick cuts, and I thought you guys were full of shit. I did, no, to be honest. Deal. It was and then deal. <laughs> I used this, and it was no resistance through the grain, which was kind of horrifying when I thought about it. Like, thunk! Yeah. And it just went through. It wasn't like cutting through paper. wasn't like It just went straight through, and it was a perfect cut. And I didn't have a plate full of, like, juices. It was all retained within the steak because it didn't rip it apart. Mm -hmm. And um, I, me and the family had steaks. We used those two knives to cut them up, and they're like, yeah, they're... There is a noticeable difference, and you know, if you enjoy steak on a regular basis, even if it's at home and you feel like a tool bringing it out with you, like that, that is a must-have, and that would be mm -hmm. a gift I'd give to anyone. Well, not just like steak, but it works well for anything that you have at dinner. Mm -hmm. You're trying to cut yeah. it up. And then I think this is the most expensive thing out of anything that. Well, no, Lori hasn't shown her stuff yet. <laughs> um, we have. <laughs> We have a couple of these. This is the prototype. I wouldn't want a prototype version because I'd feel guilty beating it to crap. But an original ruckus. Oh yeah, I mean everyone loves the that. The ruckus. That is like it. And yeah. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of the carbon fiber aesthetically. It's G10. Oh, it's G10. It's well, G10. 
Aesthetically, I think it's awesome. I would personally prefer my Carta all the way through because I'm a weirdo that way, but it's got roughed up my Carta. The ergonomics on it are perfect. It's got jumping exactly where it counts so you can get that leverage. This is a knife you can take out and beat the holy living shit out of, and in theory, at least according to people I've talked to, you can continue to beat the shit out of it. My father-in-law... And unless you break the blade, you're I'm not sorry. fucked. And it's very unlikely you'll break it. My father-in-law carries one. It's the only knife that he carries. And he has carried it since they came out with them, what, like 12, 13 years yeah. ago? And it's the only knife that he carries, and he's beat the crap out of it. And it held up very well to it. So the Ruckus is an amazing knife. That knife is an absolute legend. And it is S30B, so Mike, <laughs> yeah. would, uh, Mike would approve. Well, and they made a mini version, and they made a mini auto version. Mm -hmm. But the Ruckus is a great knife. I've seen the mini and, and the Ruckus 2s, and I'm like, they just don't speak The Ruckus 2 are different. The Ruckus minis are like this, but smaller. But Ooh. the Ruckus is a great knife overall. It really is. I like that. And when we had the guys in the shop um, for their, their special morning shop, right? Yes, okay. yep. We won't mention, anyway, they were in here and they're looking for, one of the gentlemen wanted a folder he could cut back straps out of their hunt when they're out hunting for caribou and moose and stuff one. like that. <clears throat> I recommended this, and I have no clue why he didn't pick it, and it's I think he regretted what he did pick specifically for that task. But this, this is an awesome knife, and I wouldn't mind it weighing down my belt. It's a great knife. Excellent choice. In all yeah. of them. Yeah, absolutely. But this is not a stocking stuffer. This is something you'd have in a special box. The other two are stocking stuffers. Yeah, but I mean, a ruckus is a great knife overall. It's it's a classic bench made that was only around for a couple of years, and I don't necessarily know exactly why. I have no rumors of why they stopped uh, making the ruckus, but only adults can experts. be children, well, no. and people complain and argue with each other <clears throat> and break up. That's what happens. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, anyway, what did you bring, Laurie? Well, I have this little piece of paper. That tells you the first thing that I brought. Oh my. Oh my. Yeah. Why do you have a piece of paper? Because this is Oh the Gil my. Heaven Blossom. Uh, yes. Chad, why don't you read that piece of paper? Oh for my me? god. Yes. You want the one with the okay, so to read? <laughs> uh, so this is one of I wanna say three different types of throwing stars that Gil Hibben designed and custom made. And so Oh Hibben? Yes. Yeah, heaven. We actually sell this, or is this out of no, this private is, collection? This is on the shelf. On, for, this is this is. I got all display stuff, by the way. Can I see? Oh, oh, maybe, that's maybe, awesome. maybe all, mostly all display stuff. So this piece of paper says, which has been here longer than I've been here because it's all stained. This blossom is the product of Gil Hibben and Bluegrass Grinding Specialist Ltd. Yeah, which he was guys. also half owner of. The blades can be locked in the open position to form a cross. The knife can be opened and closed with one hand by the push of a button. Blades measured at short of four inches from end to end. Very neat and rare piece from the mind of Gil Hibben. This knife on eBay in February of 2003. I'm scared to close $385. Jesus. Uh, that uh, that is an intense so knife. It's so different and unique. And it it's really always, is. It's always been on the shelf for display. And you had that in your pocket with no fear. I did. No fear. And now she has a bunch of holes. <laughs> yeah, I need a new jacket. <laughs> in case you guys want to give me something, I need a new jacket. <laughs> What's next? Well, that, no, that's all. Let's talk about this you, for a minute. That's a really interesting it's, piece. It's so different. For those at home who don't know who Gil Hibben is. Yeah, let's talk about Gil for a minute. Um, if I remember correctly, <clears throat> his claim to fame, at least that really put him on the map. He was a well-known knife maker before that. Might have been, I don't know, Rambo? Rambo 3. Rambo 3? He used to live up here, and mm -hmm. he's since moved back to Kentucky, which I think, it, I don't know if he, he's from there. We do have a few customs he made while he was up here, we and do. they're the biggest goddamn <clears throat> bowies I've ever seen, yeah. and a fucking sword. And so his son makes knives also, Wes, who makes fantastic knives. We've sharpened many fillet knives that he's made up here, and fixed blades, just regular hunting knives. And I think Wes has moved back down to Kentucky as well, but Gil made some fantastic things in the past. And we've had a lot of Gil's Wallace Ivory, Man with Ivory, Fixed Blades, sort of Alaskan knives come through the yeah. shop recently. But I have never seen anything else like this in modern it's incredibly or unique. antique style knives. Yeah, it's incredibly <clears throat> unique. I've always wanted to throw it. I don't want to throw it. It's, it's a hard one to throw, I but know. gotta be fun. You gotta like grab it uh, and just... Yeah. We could take it to Frosted Axe. We where are it's... not going to, because I've never seen another one since then. 
If you ever yeah. get, no, I'm just saying if you ever get the inclination, it's his environment's designed to cause the minimal amount of harm because it's all wood. If if True it fell, knife. it would stick. Yeah. yeah. But the uh, the floor is still concrete. Uh, not underneath the targets. It's wood planking. Uh, and then he's got rubber mats all the way back from there. I still don't know, man. This thing. I, I'm not saying do so it. Cool? I'm just saying if you have the inclination. It's so different. Yeah, I've cut myself quite a few times, just very superficial. Either but way, that is an awesome, like, super unique piece that you probably will never see well, again. And people that is a bitch to sharpen. It's a chisel grind, too, on it. So that's pretty well, so, different for any sort of throwing knife. I mean, you guys all have things oh, that. Just tip the edge. Well, yeah. yeah. Oh my god, stop it. I have calluses from working because yeah, I work for a living, and so it doesn't hurt. <laughs> doesn't hurt. <laughs> And that's the backside, Chad. <laughs> I know. I know. Oh, man. I'm going to not cut myself for the second time today. <laughs> All right, Lori. What is item number two? Because this, two. I, I will say real quick, this is like, I'm very curious to see what else you pick because this so, is an awesome start. Item number two is like not a big deal, but item number three is me really cool. Okay. So item number two is the mini Coco Bolo oh, the mini Urban Coco Trapper. Bolo. Oh. That's where the I too. really, you're welcome. Um, I really do enjoy the Urban Trapper. Stonewash. Doug had one, yes. and I think a couple other people I know have them. But I don't like a knife that big. It's not for me. So the mini, or the small, or whatever they call it, is great. And they do it in Coco Bolo, <clears throat> which PG is a fun 10. wood. PG-10. And in case you men and women don't know out there, us women jeans have <laughs> tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny little pockets. So this fits perfectly in my front pocket. Unless you have those like weird pants that have like no pockets. I love this because it's Coco Bolo. Coco and Bolo. it's so much better than the G10 and like your carbon fiber even, I think. But they do make this in carbon fiber and Coco Bolo and raw. Well, exactly. I don't mean the size necessarily, but like <clears throat> if I was to get an Urban Trapper, it would be in Coco Bolo for sure. But it's so sure. cute because it's tiny. Just a little guy. <laughs> it's just a little guy. Less women love tiny things, mostly. <laughs> But yes. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> uh, too much information. Thank you. I'm just saying. Oh man. Uh, but I really like this. I I know they made a bigger version of the Urban Trapper. Is the the Grande Urban Trapper? Uh, let's see. Gosh, the name is escaping me. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's got Grande. Be. Yeah. I don't know if you want one too petite. big though, because like if you got if you got a larger version than the standard <laughs> Urban, it would almost be unwieldy to open. I've heard stories. Hmm. Yeah, just like out of your hand and in your. <laughs> Whatever. Um, but I, I do really out. like this because I don't carry, I don't normally carry a giant knife. Like the mini Griptilian is what I usually carry or yeah. like a Great Eastern. But this is perfect size for me. So yeah. One of the things I've always liked about the uh, Urban Trapper is the uh, action on it. It's just so it's always damn good. smooth. It's always good. It's so it's smooth. Really always good. Would you say it's that German engineering? Yeah. Mm, it's gotta be. Astounding ingenuity. <laughs> <clears throat> That's fantastic. All right, Larry, what do you have for numero three? Do you guys want to guess? I don't think I can guess. You're all over the place uh, at this point. <laughs> piece of mammoth ivory? No. Oh, so close. It's something we made. No. That's depressing. I don't think Are I can guess. Are you going to pull that, that Chris whatever sword out of your pocket? No, no, no. no. She, she's it. grabbing no. one of the... Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, it's whatever that 2000... Four thousand dollar knife, isn't it? No, William oh. Henry, no. Come on, Alice, your turn. Oh God! Just take a guess. Is it <laughs> the Kershaw Shuffle Two? No. No. Okay. No, well, that is a really cute knife. <laughs> that's my guess. <laughs> it's a it's a cricket. It's a knife. It's a Colorado River knife and tool. <laughs> It's a mini buck mask. Oh, I knew that! Damn it! <laughs> Damn it! So, we, we saw her pull that out you too. Did. I know. I was like, come on, guys. Like, you can guess this. The mini buck master. So cool. The mini uh, so, way back in the 80s, Buck did, and I called the buck master. And it had the grappling hook things that unscrewed here, which the mini does as well. And it had a hollow handle, which this does as well. But there's a. I think there's. If I remember correctly, you can correct me if I'm wrong, there are two companies that made this knife. And Wilson was one of them, and I don't remember the other one. But I think there were 200 of these made. And a Buckmaster these days, oh, sorry, goes for three to $500. Mini Buckmasters, $900 minimum. And that is pretty minimum. mint. And it's all yeah. mint. It's perfect condition, yeah. It and it's fully functional too. It's exactly as 
the original Buckmaster was. Very in the Buckmaster, cool. there were three yeah. different versions of it made. It says Wilson right on it. Yes. Now, how did the shop come by this one? Luck. Uh, we bought it a couple years ago, and I've loved it, and I always <laughs> wanted it, my stocking stuffer. <laughs> but Here it, it is. I would never, I would never actually want it, but I just think it's yeah. a really fun knife. It's so different and out there. If you could put the spikes the other direction, you could totally use this as a letter opener. I don't know. If it's threaded will. all the way through. Yeah, I don't they go. yeah but they might be too long. <clears throat> no, put them in the, the handle, way. and then use it as a leather opener. You could do that, yeah. Yeah. But the Mini Buckmaster is such a cool, fun, different gift. For those that, uh, so we have a couple customers that come in only during Christmas, and they always buy a gift for someone, like wife, daughter, or significant other, and they want something different and unique. And I always try to find like those different unique things, and these two are items that are not necessarily for sale. And they just like sit on the shelf, but I mean, every once in a while we have an item that will sit on the shelf and we'll, someone will talk us out of it. Like we've had this stag handled butterfly knife oh, yeah. on the shelf yeah. for 10 years plus, and I have a customer, the one that I'm speaking of, um, and he buys a gift for his daughter every year, which is one gift. And he always comes in here and he buys it for her and he talked me out of it this year. But for the last couple of years, he'd been trying to talk me out of it and he finally did. And this is like the sort of gift that he would buy his daughter because it's so different and unique that, I mean, why why wouldn't you want it? Yeah, I mean, the chances of happening on another one was again, it's just so slim. I didn't even know these existed. Yeah. They're so adorable. The full size is like this big. It's bigger than that. It's, it's like this big. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, these these are such fun items. And I, I love tiny things. They're so adorable and cute. Like tiny hot sauce. We used to have tiny Tabasco oh, sauces. And the little tiny, the emergency hot sauce that would be around your neck and yep. the little tiny uh, like Ray Carta. used to, Ray did a batch of tiny Tabasco hot sauces. They were the little miniature things. Not yet. She likes tiny things though. Speaking of tiny things. <gasps> Vodka. Well these are, Fairly rare, if I remember correctly. Ray the said, distillery went out of business in the 90s. Yeah. Speaking of 90s. So when were these bottled in that case? Do you see how uh, much has gone through the cap? Oh, I sure do. So a while ago. Yeah. All right. Oh, we're actually drinking this. Oh, we're doing it, my dude. I did not uh, know do that. Do we have three or four? I'll just do the bottle. We, okay. We don't have to open all three. We, we probably, if oh, we're okay. going to... Fill these up, right? Yeah, why not? Yeah. There we go, and then whoop, oh, okay, and then finish off. Well, you have what you have in your hand, Chad, and this will probably be the fuck pretty good. <laughs> I hate you guys. Oh, that's good. Okay. Oh man, I don't know. I'm Doesn't not going to help you. Pour some more in there. <laughs> okay. Oh, Chad needs a little more. Oh fuck you! Does have a date? So. <laughs> no, they just have a date. The, but the distillery went out of business, I think, in the 90s. All right, so this is bottled at least in the mid to late 90s. So it's you over 20-year-old 20, 20 vodka? Well, we did this last year. Yeah. We dug. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Well, can I get a cheers? I'm sure there's a video of us. Oh, yeah, there is. It's embarrassing. Oh, there's a lot of vodka in my shot glass. Hold on, Yeah, Laura, you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. Thanks, guys. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, everybody. And to you all, thank you, subscribers, all 10 of you. Ooh, got a little kick to it there, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs>